My fiancé had a tantrum because I skipped his family dinner to see my dying sister. I got engaged to my partner of seven years, Ray, in May. Both sides of our family were really happy about this, and we had a big family meal two weeks after getting engaged. His brother lives 250 miles away and couldn't get here for that meal, so we decided to have a meal just for his family in late June, when his brother would be back for the weekend. This weekend was arranged long before we got engaged, so he wasn't back just for the meal. Earlier this year, my sister Casey got a serious eye infection that very quickly turned into an ulcer, which scarred her cornea and left it at a high risk of a perforation. She needed a corneal graft, but her surgeon was away for four weeks, so she was going to have to wait until he got back to have it. However, her eye didn't hold, and it perforated the day I was supposed to be going to the family meal with Ray's brother. Kaisa's wife was at work and had her phone turned off, and our mom was away with our stepdad. So when Casey called me to let me know what was happening, I knew she would at the hospital on her own. I immediately talked to my boss, and he let me go early so Casey wasn't on her own. I text Ray to let him know what was going on, and he texts me back to send Kay his love and to remind me about the meal that night. I ignored the comment about the meal, as it was the last thing on my mind. Once I got to the hospital, I was taken back into a room where Casey was, to be greeted by three doctors and two nurses rushing around trying to help Casey. I was then informed that she needed to have an emergency operation to have her eye glued, or else she would lose it. The problem was that they didn't have a surgeon at that hospital that could do it, and she needed to go to another hospital an hour and a half away. They asked if she would need transportation, or if I could take her. I said I would take her. Once we got to the other hospital, we were told that she would be. Having the operation at 5.30 p.m., I knew then that I wouldn't make the dinner and text Ray to let him know. He flipped out and basically told me to leave Casey at the hospital and have her wife pick her up after the op was done. At this point, I still hadn't been able to get a hold of Caius's wife. I told him that wasn't going to happen and that he was out of order to even ask me to do that. I told my husband I would never choose him as the father of my child. My husband Liam and I have two children, and I'm currently pregnant with our third. Liam has so far been a wonderful husband and a fantastic father. I was out at brunch with a few friends of mine. I was telling them a funny story about my cravings and how Liam had made a cake from scratch for it. A friend of a friend named Paige said that I chose so well and that she should have put as much thought as I did in choosing the one for her. I have a reputation for being really thorough and thinking things out before doing anything, the responsible one. I told her that I never would have chosen Liam to be the father of our first child, but I am so grateful he was. I was very lucky. Our pre-marriage life was messy. I was with another man, Dave. Dave was a steady, reliable man, and we had been together for years. Dave made a new friend who was Liam and I could not help but absolutely him. According to him, Liam made Dave feel young again and he was desperate to reclaim the sense of youth he lost by being responsible since he was young. He spent all of his time with Liam and other guys. Dave would spend every night out partying until 3 a.m. He spent his entire paycheck and some of my paychecks on wrestling videos and online gambling. He bought a motorcycle. He used our savings to buy crypto. He shaved his head bald. The last straw was him spending $20,000 of my savings to travel. Throughout this, Liam was incredibly disrespectful to me. Dave broke up with me when I asked him to stop hanging out with Liam and his other friends. I told my husband I would never choose him as the father of my child. He immediately moved in with a girl I had concerns about. I felt deeply hurt, and for the first time in my life, I felt like hurting someone in return. I was miserable, out of my mind, and called Liam over. I wanted to ruin their friendship like he ruined my relationship. He was annoyed at Dave for something else and was down for anything. I woke up the next morning realizing that I made a huge mistake, but Liam had also pounded me till kingdom come and away. Dave never could. Unfortunately, my bad decision caught up to me and I got pregnant. Ironic since I had always wanted children, but I was told I was infertile. Both Liam and I were against children out of wedlock and we had a small wedding. I was ready to grit my teeth and make the best of our marriage, but surprisingly Liam turned out to be an incredible partner and father. If it was a mistake, it was the best mistake of my life. Paige was very offended that I said Liam wouldn't in my choice initially. She messaged Liam to tell him what I said. I was a nervous wreck about this, 
and was worried about how Liam would react. Fortunately, a few hours later Paige apologized for overstepping and reached out to me. She was having a rough time in her own relationship and felt I was being ungrateful, as my boyfriend, unlike hers, never put something into my drinks or laid hands on me. I also checked up on Liam. I asked him if he felt hurt by what I said. He said he was deeply offended and I should make up for it with a thousand kisses plus interest starting right now. My stepdad turned my family against me. So let me start this off by saying I apologize for how long this may be. My dad passed when I was 15. Him and my mom weren't all that close by that time, so while it hit me hard, she wasn't as phased as you'd expect. I joined the military when I was 17, and in my first year out of the house, my mom remarried. I never really vibed with him, just had different personalities and such. He would often make snide remarks and tell me to man up about any inconvenience I'd be upset about. This led to spats between us, and I was often just as at fault as he was for these disagreements, so it never got too serious. I got medically discharged after a little under five years and my mom and him said they'd be happy to have me back in the house. I told them it'd be brief, just until I got on my feet and got a job, and even offered to pay rent, to which they declined. About three days into being back home my stepdad went alone with me, asked what he thought a fair rent would be. I was confused, but it was his house, so we came to an agreement, and I kept it from my mom assuming he did not want her to know as he never mentioned it around her. I never asked for anything from them, not out of spite, I just wanted to do things myself. He had a son from a previous marriage. Him and I didn't share many common interests or anything, but I never had any issues with him, I'd say we got along. The only thing is, he was given a lot from them. Paid for his schooling, paid for his car, paid for his living arrangements, through college, and even after, I was a little less than a year older than him. So he started college right after they married. Like I said, I didn't want or need the help, but it felt lame that he'd get all that assistance, and I was immediately asked for rent, but I digress. I moved out after three months, and not long after met a girl who I was crazy about, and we started dating. It was my first relationship, and I was over the moon the entire time. Like in that early relationship haze, but it was just constant. I was very nervous to bring her home. My mom and I were very close, and I always worried she'd be very judgmental of a girl I'd bring home. My worries ended up being unwarranted. They got along extremely well. My girlfriend does not have a family, really long story, so my mom and stepdad became like that for her. Her and my mom hit it off extremely well to the point they were hanging out just the two of them at times. My stepdad turned my family against me, and it made me extremely happy. My stepdad even really liked her, and I felt it brought us closer together, which isn't something I felt I wanted until we were. His dad abandoned his family growing up, and he put himself through school and got a nice high-paying job all by himself, which I had immense respect in him for. About a year, and I knew this was the girl I was going to marry. I told my mom and stepdad, and they both seemed extremely happy. She was practically part of the family already. My mom gave me her engagement ring, my dad gave her, which she kept. The job I had didn't pay great, so I figured even if it wasn't the ring she'd always have, it'd be a great placeholder. When I proposed, my girlfriend told me it wasn't a placeholder, and she absolutely loved it. I was legitimately never happier in my life. We started wedding planning, and my mom and stepdad said they'd help take care of the finances. It was the first time they'd offered to help me financially, and it really meant a lot. Fast forward to about three months later, I get a call from my stepdad who said I needed to come over. Felt a bit ominous, but I went over there after work. When I got there, my mom, stepdad, stepbrother, and fiancé. I saw her on the couch and could tell she had been crying. I immediately thought someone had died and went to go sit next to her when my stepdad stopped me. He started hitting me with accusations of me cheating on her for our entire relationship. I was puzzled and told everyone there I don't even text any women I'm not related to besides her. Apparently... Some girl had gotten my fiancé's number and told her that we were sleeping together for over a year now, but she didn't know I was in a committed relationship. She sent her screenshots of alleged conversations and new stuff about me that a random person wouldn't know. I, like a fool, 
couldn't see what was happening in front of me. I was stunned, saddened, and furious. I begged her from across the room to look at my phone and see I'd never done any of that. Her and my mother were both weeping, and I started to cry. My stepdad called me every word he could think of and escorted me out of the house while telling me if he saw me on his property again, he'd call the police. I spent the next several weeks trying to contact them to no avail. Calls, texts, voicemails, every messaging app out there. Nothing. My stepdad turned my family against me. After those weeks, I got a call from my stepdad who told me to stop trying to contact her and that I was never welcome in his house or around his family again. I tried to call my mother over this time to no avail as well. After about a month, all I got from anyone was a text from my mother saying how sad and disappointed she was. My mom didn't really have much family, so they always spent holidays with my stepdad's side. They all shunned me as well. I saw their Christmas pictures on Facebook with my ex-fiancé present and seemingly in good spirits, which crushed me. The only family I had that would talk to me at all was my dad's brother and his family. Despite that even, they all seemed wary of me too. The only one that I think truly believed me was my uncle. I don't think I'd have made it without him, honestly. He showed me what I'd been missing in fatherly love, and I've never been so grateful for anyone. About six months after it all, I moved away from the East Coast and settled out in California, needing to get away from it all. A little less than a year after I moved, I got call from an area, code from back home which I rarely got anymore. I picked up and it was my stepbrother whom I promptly hung up on. He called me back and I ignored it, but it stuck with me all day. I decided that if he called back again, I'd pick up, which he did later that night. It was awkward, at best. He told me my fiancé was really torn up for a long time. It took her nearly a year to even start looking again for a significant other. I hadn't at all since it ended. A few months into her doing so, my stepdad encouraged him to ask her on a date, which he did. Things went okay for the first couple outings, but never really clicked, apparently. He told my stepdad about that, and the idiot told him, I didn't get rid of Op for nothing. She's a great girl. You need to figure it out with her. I almost collapsed, and it was quickly replaced with anger. Apparently, he had gotten a girl, I still don't know who, to pose as someone I had an affair with and forged some message screenshots to have her sent to my fiancé. He told me he'd said it to him about a month ago, and he didn't know what to do. Apparently it bothered him enough that he couldn't just sit on the info anymore, so he told me and said he was going to tell my mom and fiancé the next day. He called me first as a courtesy, so he knew what to say to them regarding me. I think my mom slept with my high school boyfriend. My boyfriend and I started dating when I was 14 and he was 17. We dated for like three months in high school and broke up. He then dated one of my best friends and told me he'd break up with her if I date him again, so being young and naive I did. So we dated for like another year. I had to move across the country with my family. This time it was a super messy breakup. We were in the middle of fighting over text, and he messaged saying, You know what? I slept with your mom, and sent a picture as proof. I briefly looked at the picture, enough to be like, Yep, that looks like my mom, and then deleted it and blocked him. I didn't want to believe it, so I just didn't think about it. So I just locked that away for about ten years. I'm now married to the love of my life and have two young kids. We live far from my mom, and she came to visit and drove here. We only see her once a year. While she was here, she kept lying about small things, just small little lot here and there. But it bothered me. After she left, it boiled over, and I called her out and told her I don't appreciate being lied to, especially about dumb things that don't matter. It escalated, and I hung up on her. She then makes a group chat with me and my husband and sends another message about how she didn't lie, but that she has to lie because she knows how I'll act weird if she does not make up these little lies. I messaged back, okay, liar. She then sends a text about something I said two years ago when I was complaining about my husband's family to her. This made me see red, because I feel like that's why she made a group chat with me and my husband so she could send that to him. I don't know if it was to hurt me by hurting him, to make him mad at me so I'm fighting a war on two fronts, or to get my husband on her side of the argument. I think my mom slept with my high school boyfriend. Either way, I lost it. I told her I know she slept with my high school boyfriend. She proceeds to keep texting me about how. 
She's an adult, and I'm not her mom. And it doesn't matter why she lies to me or what she's doing. She ignores the thing about sleeping with my ex. So I send it again, like two more times, before she's finally like stop sending that crap to my phone, and then tells me I'm crazy and need medication. So since then, I've been no contact with her. I do believe she slept with my ex, but also I'm worried about if he was lying and said that to ruin our relationship. It's something I've ignored for ten years, but now that I've said it aloud, so many things make sense. When we first dated, she went through my phone and read my messages with him to my aunt, and they made fun of me at Thanksgiving. Back when I was still dating him, but after we moved across the country, she went through my phone and read our dirty texts aloud at the dinner table. And I always wondered why she did that. She has always been weird with my exes. Every guy I've dated, she keeps them friended on Snapchat and messages them after we break up and updates me on what they're up to. My ex was crazy. He dated my best friend to get back at me so I 100% could see him sleeping with my mom just so he could use it as ammo against me later. My mom is a narcissist. My older brother is no contact with her and has been for three years now. So here's my issue. Where do I go from here? I know she's going to try to reach out and deny it, but she lies about everything so I know I won't believe her. I really don't know how she could prove her innocence to me. Even if my ex reached out and told me he was lying and made it up, I would just think she messaged him and paid him off. Am I the a-hole for not waking up early and helping my mother-in-law with chores? I, F25, has been married for a year now. It is customary in our culture that women stay with their in-laws after marriage. I didn't subscribe to this and told my husband, then boyfriend, before marriage itself that I want to live separately. He agreed since he himself wanted to live away from parents and build his own life. But as a compromise, we would still visit them and stay at their place every couple of months. It is again customary. Dill helps mother-in-law with household tasks, the stench of patriarchy. In our house, that is mine and husband's, we are equals. We do chores together. In in-law's place, it's always his mom who does majority of chores. She was a psalm, too. When I am visiting, I am expected to help her with the chores, not my husband, just me. I just rope him in as well. The main issue is that everyone there wakes up at 5.36 a.m. That's way too early for me, even on days when I have work. Since we go there on my off days, I just want to sleep in. At least till 8 to 9 a.m. Initially, they didn't say much about this. Just a bit of snide comments that I let go. Use my own battles and all. But today morning, my mother-in-law made a big show of how I never help her with chores. Let me clarify. She wakes at 6 a.m. and finishes most tasks by 9 a.m., by the time I am awake, it's all done. I help prep, but that doesn't count to her. The fact I don't slave away in kitchen is making her mad. When she went on a whole woe on me act, my husband, who normally supports me, also got mad at me. He asked why I couldn't wake up few days out of a month earlier than I want to and help his mom. When I said he can help his mom himself since he wakes up anyway, he said that's not the point. He said he doesn't ask much of me, and this is least I can do. Respect his parents when we are staying under their roof. I got mad and told him, I don't want to stay under their roof, and neither do I have to. With that, I just packed my bags and left that place. Am I the a-hole for not waking up early and helping my mother-in-law with chores? Now my parents and husband are blasting my phone for overreacting. Am I the a-hole? Because I see a lot of comments asking me to help my mother-in-law, no one has anywhere to be. It's literally the weekend. There's no requirement for things to be done by that time, other than the fact it is how we do here. And I help her meal prep, cut veggies and everything the night before. I clean the house too, roping in my husband as well, though we literally visit for two days. Also to people who commented I shouldn't go then, my initial agreement, before marriage with them and my husband was that I wouldn't go, I work full-time in a different city. I want to relax on weekends. They kept calling, begging and guilt tripping. I finally agreed to visit. As in, one weekend a month. We go there Friday after office and return Sunday night. That's literally the entire weekend and duration of stay. If I wasn't there, I would be sleeping until 12 noon of after. Hus knows this well. 
As I respect his home, I am getting at 8-9. It feels like yet another working day to me. Getting at 6 a.m. is like overtime on already hectic 12-day week. To all who are guessing, yes, I am Indian. From Kerala, to be precise. And yeah, I know many other cultures have this in common. Reading each of your stories makes me sadder and braver at the same time. To everyone who is saying you know what you married into. Now do as they want. A bit of backstory. I am from the same culture they are. I grew up seeing my mom work harder hours than my dad, get home later and using crowded public transport while my dad used own vehicle. And then make tea for him. It sounds very simple. A tea, right? It's not. It's coming on struggling in public transport, and as soon as you reach having to go, make tea for a man who has reached home from his job ten minutes away in own vehicle. Make him tea and dinner while he watched TV. I know the fight she fought and fate she accepted. I know even after thirty years of marriage she is upset he. I called out my innocent husband on his baby behavior. He throws tantrums and hits people when they don't agree with him. Poor baby. I, 29 Canadian, met my, now, husband, 29, Egyptian Canadian, in early 2021 via a dating app, but we had mutual friends already, same university. I quickly fell for him and after a year we got engaged. Two months later, we had our Kapitab Nika Islamic ceremony. It was very small, immediate family only. Our wedding reception is in one week, 4.5 months after the Kapitob. There is obviously a fair amount of stress, as we're stretched pretty thin, to make the wedding work shortly after purchasing our first home. My husband is in a new job, and I'm in a famously high-stress job. I definitely acknowledge I have not been my best self lately, trying to make ends meet and get myself through each day, frankly. On to the red flag. My husband is a charismatic funny guy. He's loud, as am I. His personality has been something I've loved about him since I met him. But lately there's less humor and more commentary on world politics, sometimes right-wing conspiracy, or what I would call conspiracy, type stuff. It's preachy. When I engage, it quickly becomes a fight, seemingly regardless of my stance. When I take issue with his tone and personal attacks, I get yelled at or told I'm purposefully vilifying him. He's starting to shout at me more often. Today it was in front of his whole family. It was humiliating. I cried. It was over me pushing back when his family told me they had already done the seating chart for their guests, despite not having the entire guest list. I called out my innocent husband on his baby behavior. I did not think I was being rude, but I just explained that I needed to work off the draft I had because I knew it had all guests on it. I was reassuring her she could rearrange tables if I got stuff wrong. My husband interjected himself from the next room shouting at me for saying his mom didn't know everyone that was coming. Then he shouted that he wasn't shouting. We were. Shouting. I shouldn't have. But I called him out on his immaturity. I called him out for yelling in front of our nephews, 971, who were there. I told him to stay out of it if he was going to yell. We finished the seating chart, and I left to stay with my parents we are visiting from out of town. It's been five hours since the incident and I haven't heard from my husband. When I left I gave everyone a quick hug goodbye, including my husband. He didn't walk me to my car. He's been shouting at me more at home too. I avoid certain topics altogether. It got physical once and he put his hand on my throat. He apologized profusely for this and blamed it on frustration at my poor memory during an argument we were having. Sometimes he pushes me, which I find super embarrassing in public. He shoves me out of the way if I go to pay at the store despite us often alternating who pays. I have verbalized that my parents don't treat each other that way. I have told him I don't want to be treated that way. I have explicitly said, don't shout at me, don't push me, threaten to involve his older brothers. I'm sure I'm extra upset right now for a handful of reasons, wedding stress, menses not praying, work stress, but I'm starting to worry that I'm being willfully blind here. I know my girlfriend has lied to me, but I can't tell her how I know. My 24 male girlfriend, 19F, and I have been dating for a year and a half. For context, we started as friends with benefits because I was moving away and she was going home for summer. During that time I slept with a co-worker while Delia and I weren't exclusive. Fast forward a couple months and I decided to move back to the city I went to college at. Since Delia still had some years left, 
I'd spoken to her about us being together properly and she was all on board. Once I moved, we essentially lived together. We got very serious very quickly, which I was happy about. We had an argument when she found out about my co-worker. She said, I told her I only kissed her. Which I was sure I told her that I slept with her. Ultimately, I apologized as I hadn't told her the full story and we moved on. It was fine. We had a productive discussion talking about anyone else we were seeing sleeping with when we first started things casually. She said she went on a date with a guy named Mike, but it didn't go well, and nothing happened between them at all. I explained the only girl I slept with was my co-worker. Anyways, just after Christmas last year, I could tell she was hiding texting someone. I wanted to give her the time to deal with whatever it was, and then come forward about it. She didn't. I always want to respect her privacy. But there is a difference between privacy and secrecy. And this was the latter. I went through her phone while she was in the shower. I know my girlfriend has lied to me, but I can't tell her how I know. I saw she had messages from an email address on her phone. She's from another country, so everything they were saying was in her native tongue. But the email was in English, and I could tell it was a man's name. The notifications were also on mute, so I assumed this was, so I wouldn't see them accidentally. I then went on to Snapchat. I found Mike's name from roundabout when we started seeing each other casually. He had saved Snapchats from her when she was back home during the summer and they were essentially nudes. Now I'm not mad about the fact that this happened. I'm mad that she never told me the full story but pulls me up on similar issues. Since then I've spoke to her about the email address and I believe her explanation it's a long story that's too personal to share on here, but I believe her and understand why she wanted to keep this from me until she was ready to tell me. I left the mic thing for a while since I know it was before we were exclusive. Until we were out with Dahlia's friends and they mentioned Mike they'd met last year. I was told one date and nothing happened. Yet her friends met him? Doesn't seem to add up so I asked her about it when we got back to her apartment. She told me after their date, they went and met her friends. But she swore nothing else happened. She said they didn't even text or anything afterwards, which I know is a lie. I can't tell her I know she's lied to me without admitting I've gone through her phone. My sister used her emotional trauma to get close to my husband. My sister Lisa lost her husband Jimmy two years ago in a motorcycle accident. A year ago, she reached out to us and told us she was having a hard time adjusting and said that she needed help. I helped her find a good therapist and she has been getting her life back on track. My husband Rick felt bad for her and started spending a lot of time with her. For the past six months they have spent more and more time together. At first I was fine with it because she was finally becoming like my sister again. She started smiling. I was so happy for her and so was my husband. They started spending more time alone and I got a little jealous. I told my husband I would like it if we could spend more time together and that I was feeling a little neglected. He said okay, but nothing changed. Today my sister came to my house crying because she had a dream about Jimmy. My husband and I comforted her, but I was a little annoyed because the second I let her in my house, she ran into my husband's arms. We all went into the living room and sat down. My husband asked her what happened in the dream, and she actually asked me to leave the room because she didn't feel comfortable telling me. I was so upset at this point, I immediately left and started tearing up in the other room. I was in the other room for around ten minutes when I heard a loud sound in the living room so I got up and went there. I could not believe what I saw. They were having intimacy on my couch in our home. I ran out of the room because I was going to vomit right there and locked myself in my room. Rick walked into the room an hour later still topless and wouldn't even look at me. He mumbled something and sat on the bed. I was so angry that he wouldn't even look at me that I almost left right there. I asked him what the heck was going on with him and my sister. He sat there for a few minutes without saying anything while I was crying my eyes out, until I finally yelled at him to answer me. My sister used her emotional trauma to get close to my husband. He whispered that he loved her. At this point, I lost it. I started yelling, how could he do this to me? Do these past ten years mean nothing to him? Literally dropped to my knees and asked, How could he betray me with my own sister and then tell me he loves her? He was quiet the entire time until I stopped yelling. He said that he had been regretting not experimenting with other women before we got married, 
and that he shouldn't have married the first girl he was with. I was stunned and asked if he ever even loved me. He said yes, but that after spending time with my sister, he realized she is who he wants to be with. I had no words. I didn't have any clue what to say. All my life was falling apart in front of my eyes and I was scared. I told him I might be pregnant and he said that he would think about supporting me. Then he said he was leaving me to be with my sister. He apologized to him and told me I deserve better than him and that he will do whatever he can to help me and the baby and if I agree to divorce him, he will give me everything he just wants out of our marriage. In that moment I felt like I hated him and never wanted to see him again so I screamed at him, fine, just get the F out. You ruined my life. I hope you are effing happy, you piece of crap. And then he had the audacity to try to hug me. I flipped out and pushed him off of me. Someone knocked on the door, then he told me that he still loved me and we would figure everything out and left. I decided to call my parents and tell them what happened. My mom dropped a bombshell on me that my sister told her that she had feelings for my husband and that she wanted to be with him. Why she didn't tell me this, I have no clue, but I feel like everyone is against me. I just found out that my husband is having an affair with my high school bully. I just can't believe that he could fool me. His affair started six months ago. There were no sign. I just found out by accident three weeks ago when his phone was on the nightstand. My husband was sleeping with my high school bully. I grew up in a small town and this woman bullied me severely in middle and high school. I confided in my husband that this woman's bullying literally made me attempt to take my life. The only reason I am alive is because my parents come home early and found me on time. Knowing this, he still slept with her. After graduation, I did everything to find a job in a bigger city and moved, leaving all the hurtful memories. I worked hard for a year, found an apartment, bought a car, and later started college. That's where I met my husband. We got married two years ago. I'm eight weeks pregnant now. He doesn't know yet. When I was in college, my bully reached out to me after we bumped into each other at a party. She was new in town and was glad she saw a familiar face. She never acknowledged what she did, and I never confronted her. I didn't want to open old wounds. However, I wasn't going to befriend her, so I just rebuffed any attempt of reconnecting. She still moved in the same crowd as my husband and me. Three weeks ago, when my husband was in the shower, he got a notification on Messenger. I thought it was odd since he's not been active on Facebook or Messenger in ages. We know each other's code, so I looked and there was her name in pictures, telling him she missed his PP. I scrolled a few messages back and there was a full conversation, full pictures of everything from both parties involved. I just found out that my husband is having an affair with my high school bully. I felt sick and my eyes went blurry, so I just left the phone back where it was and acted like nothing. Over the next two weeks, I looked in his phone whenever I could. I found out that my husband deleted Messenger when he didn't use it, except for the time he forgot and I found it. I started doing the same. Whenever he's sleeping, playing games, or out for a run, I take his phone and install Messenger. I could trace back their relationship to six months ago. They'd been sleeping together for four a lot of graphic descriptions of what they want to do or have done to each other, but also a lot about me. Although it was often one-sided, it's always my bully asking questions and trying to get answers about me, and my husband either reluctantly answering or outright telling her not to talk about me. But they've discussed my intimate life and apparently I'm a vanilla bean. To her constant questions about if he preferred me better in bed, he told her that she is way better. Discussions about me often ended in him getting irritated and stopping answering for days. I want to leave my husband, but I don't want to tell him why. I don't want to give him or my bully the satisfaction of knowing that they hurt me. I just want to ask for divorce and just tell him that I wasn't in love with him anymore. And that I'm not happy in our marriage. It won't be lying technically because he's not the man I loved and I'm not happy in our marriage. I haven't told anyone what I've found out, but I've told my mom that I want to leave my husband and stated the reasons above. She went berserk.